Hey everyone, we'll be dissecting the pigeon today, and the first thing that you want to do when you're dissecting is remove all of the skin and feathers, because the feathers can retain a lot of this preservative fluid, so they can be a little bit smelly. And we want to just be looking at the muscles and not have feathers getting in the way. So turn your pigeon on so it's belly up. Part of the feathers, you can see the keel. Birds are feathered in tracks, so there are some parts of a bird that do not actually have any feathers coming out of it. Uh, that just gets covered over by feathers on other parts of the body, which is kind of cool. Be very careful as you're coming towards the top of the neck, because there's a, um, a structure lying very close to the skin called the crop, where, they, where birds store seeds and other things that they have eaten. So it's okay if you cut into it, you can just empty it of seeds or whatever the bird's dinner was. <laughs> but you'll want to keep that structure for the digestive unit. So if you can avoid cutting it, that's great. If you accidentally get into it, that's also perfectly fine. Just make sure you keep the structure. And the bird skin is very thin, so you do not have to actually cut at all. You're pretty much just lightly <laughs> going through the skin here. And then you can work the skin back along the sides of the body. You have to go around the little legs. The knees are tucked really tight up here. So you work that skin around the legs and then um, off the back towards the arms, the wings. But again, be careful of that throat area. And we can see this this particular bird's this particular bird's crop is really full, and I can feel seeds in there. Um, that may be getting in our way, so you can cut a slight incision and empty the crop. And if the skin the skin may be adhering fairly tightly to that surface structure, so I'm going to be a little bit careful. And if it feels like it's too tight, you can leave the skin attached um, and don't worry about it. Um, just make sure to get the feathers off. Turning your bird over, you can peel the skin back from the back and then we'll take a look at the wings. For the pigeon's tail, pulling up will actually damage um, the underlying tissue, so you do not want to pull those out. You want to just trim them close to the base. Looking at the wings of the bird, this um, you have the long flight feathers, so you want to actually take those flight feathers off and they will pull most of the skin with it. So then you're just looking at the underlying forearm. So grab small groups of feathers and pull them either towards the wrist or towards the elbow. If you see a feather that's kind of like a little tube with a feather sticking out the top. That's a feather that's currently growing, so this, this feather was being replaced. For the end, as we're looking at towards the, the finger, <laughs> the fingers of the bird, the, the little reduced phalanges, you do want to be careful. You don't want to take those off. So at this point, maybe take just one or two flight feathers at a time and take them out. Now we have the wing without the flight feathers. There is a allular bone here, the thumb bone of the bird. So you want to just be careful about that so you don't accidentally rip that off. It'll be just a little bitty stub. 
Um, if it does come off, it, it won't actually hurt anything. <laughs> so it's, you don't have to be that careful, but um, it's kind of cute to see it in place. As we spread the wing, there is a muscle and tendon that's spreading this triangle of tissue. Humerus is here, radius ulna is here, and we have this patagium that is stretching between your shoulder and your wrist of your bird. So this, this tissue is fairly tightly adhered. I would recommend working from the elbow out and up, so we're keeping an eye out for that tendon. I'm supporting that tendon as I'm pulling skin away, just to be a little bit more gentle. I'm just going to trim here. Instead of putting too much pressure on that tendon, I'm just going to trim that skin away so I'm not pulling on it. Lifting your wing feathers here, you can see this is where that thumb is. You see that little thumb? Not this, this is feather. <laughs> this is where that thumb of the bird is. So just carefully pull those feathers away so you don't take the bone itself. So we have a nice wing here, ready for muscle dissection. Um, do go ahead and skin the other wing, just again, so you don't have feather fluff everywhere. All right, now that you've skinned your bird, um, like I said, if this, this crop is particularly enormous, so if it is getting in your way, you can cut a little opening and, and empty it out. <laughs> Cause because this is, this is a little ridiculous. A large percentage of a bird's weight is in the pectoral and supracoracoideus muscles. Um, well, at least in flying birds. <laughs> so these huge, enormous muscles are, are going to be the first you'll separate. Take your scissors and cut along the keel. And you're cutting so that you're folding your pectoralis muscle back. You're leaving it connected around the shoulder, but you're folding it back from the keel so you can see the supracoracoideus underneath. So just cut that muscle right along the keel. So I've freed the pectoralis muscle from the keel, and as we peel up, you kind of want to look. Also cut down into the supracoracoideus a little bit. But that's okay. So look for that muscle separation. And that's how you're going to separate your pectoralis from supracoracoideus. Peeling those muscles apart, you can see the fibers of your pectoralis muscle and then your separate supracoracoideus. Both fibers are aiming up towards the shoulder. Either. If you're seeing those fibers still kind of connecting down here, you can run your thumb down to lightly separate your pectoralis muscle. So you're separating your large pectoralis muscle from the smaller underlying supracoracoideus muscle. In the arm, we have a few muscles to look at, and they're not going to involve a lot of deep down dissection. You're pretty much just separating fascia. We'll go over, over these muscles in the walkthrough, but just take your blunt probe and separate, separate these muscles from their origin to their insertion, or at least close to the insertion, so you can get a blunt probe underneath. If it does feel like the fascia is holding on pretty tightly and you're, you don't want to risk the muscle, you can use your scissors and gently, 
gently just cut alongside that muscle. Um, I wouldn't even close the scissors, just use your scissors as a, as a lifting tool to lift that fascia away from the muscles. As you are separating the muscles of the leg, be careful not to splay it too far to the side, um, just, to, just to preserve this muscle here, your iliotibialis cranialis. You do want to separate it, but again, too much pushing and pulling, you might break it. But again, this is for investigation, so if you break it, it's fine. <laughs> if it's broken and you can tell me what's broken, if you can name it, that's good. <laughs> so, yeah. so again, move the leg around, look for those separations in muscle tissue so that you can get your blunt probe in there and separate fully from the top to the bottom or at least close to the top and bottom on both the femur and on the tibiotarsus area.